you want to learn how to hack, maybe even do it professionally one day, and you don't know how to move from this overwhelming sense that there's too much to learn and then gather those skills and apply for an enterprise or like a consultant-like position at a, a company like mine. I'm going to lay out a framework that's going to move you through three different levels and then a few questions along the way to help really get you to that end goal. The first step is just to get going, get the ball moving from inertia, because you're right, there is so much to know in this field. And often we have the, this analysis paralysis where we never actually take the first step. And it doesn't matter what that step is. Go and install Linux, install Kali, install Ubuntu. It doesn't matter what version you install. If you have a system already set up, go download and install Python and write your first hello world. It's truly satisfying when you get that. The whole purpose of this first goal is to give yourself a lot of exposure to all of cybersecurity. Maybe do a crypto challenge or do a reverse engineering on Try Hack Me. Yeah, you might have to look at one of the walkthroughs or tutorials, but your whole goal in this first phase is to find the niche that you do enjoy. Now, at this point, you're probably gonna have to ask yourself two questions. The first one is, what part do I truly enjoy and is it profitable? Like for me, web security was the one that really fell into something I really enjoyed doing and it was profitable in the industry. The other question you wanna ask yourself is, am I doing this just for fun or do I wanna do it professionally? If you wanna just do it for fun, stay in phase one as long as you enjoy doing it and just keep trying new things out. If you want to do it professionally, that's when you want to move to the next step. And that's to get good. You want to start taking really good notes at this point because you want to pick your niche. Like let's use the example of web security and you want to find all the resources that really fall into that niche because you want to start getting better at that niche. You know it's a profitable one based off of your research and the industry needs it. So you want to start gathering up the resources. With web security, it's going to be things like the OWASP, OWASP testing guide. Maybe you want to install OWASP juice shop because that's going to give you the step, like you're, it's going to gamify some of the learning activities or like OWASP secure coding dojo, another great one for web security. If you stand up like a try hack me or hack the box account, which are great and they are free resources, only focus on the web security aspects. You're also going to find tools that you're going to want to learn along the way, like a web proxy. And personally, I think web is probably one of the best places to start because you don't need to know a lot of coding skills, though you can go down like the Node.js or JavaScript route because it's kind of like the big thing right now. When you dive into web security, you're going to find tools like Durbuster or GoBuster or Directory Brute Forcing maybe a web proxy. And as you go down this path, you start wanting to gather the notes around what can help you in this niche and what methodologies exist. And make sure you keep good notes because there's so much to learn. You're going to forget a lot of the things you learned and make sure you have good notes along the way. If you're feeling gutsy, put those notes in a public place, like a blog or something like that, because later on when you apply for a job, you can link to that resource. And as like someone who looks at candidates, I love seeing people's journey along the way and what they've been learning on because it shows so much of their passion in this industry. At a certain point, you're gonna to wanna to start applying for a position. And this is where the next question comes in, is do you wanna go more the enterprise route or do you wanna go more the consultant route? And while these can be very overlapping, they're a little bit different in the approach. Like for me, when I was at General Electric, I went down the enterprise route and it pulled me away from a lot of the technical things I really enjoyed, but it moved me more towards asking the questions like, how do these risks impact the business? Like if I was at an ice cream shop, I need to really be helping support the company sell more ice cream. So I wanna start applying security to their business. How can me, accomplishing all these security things, help them sell more ice cream. It might be because they can go after clients they originally couldn't. Maybe I'm able to help their developers get more secure code, which is a requirement by this compliance, and I can help speed up their delivery times to production if I do it correctly. There's all these little aspects within enterprise security that kind of pulls you away a little bit from the technical and you start thinking more conceptually around how does this risk affect the business? Whereas if you go the consultant route, you get to kind of return to level one a couple different times to try and hone new skills to sell your clients. And ultimately you're asking not the question of how does this risk impact the business, but what can I do to help the enterprise reach their goals, which usually impacts like more technical things you get to learn. You get a little bit more flexibility as a consultant, but once you decide those, that comes into the next 
phase. That's get smart. You wanna do some research finding what problems companies are really facing within your niche and then apply these technical things to their problems. Now this might take some experience and actually some work to understand these things. So like let's talk about web security. It might be taking tools like bundler audit or handbrake or static code analysis tools that you're using for web security and applying those to their development cycles. Maybe including them when they push a new build, you do a quick static code analysis and then learn some of those other tools that those teams are using. So you don't just like come in with weird reports or bugs you're sending, you can work within their existing processes. The other piece of this is compliances. Looking at the different compliances that companies are struggling with right now, which have requirements in your niche. Another piece is starting to truly understand the risks that you're finding. You might be able to find cross-site scripting and SQL injection, but you might not know how to fix those things. And this is where like the other understanding of the different coding or different programming languages are gonna help because then you can give the developers like here is the code that you need to fix. And I know compliance, risk, and remediation aren't like the coolest hands-on keyboard thing, but that is really what makes someone senior in this field is being able to apply all of the knowledge they have, their niche, to the business, whether it's an enterprise or a consultant, that's really what makes you up your game. If you're looking to do this professionally, go watch this video on how to position yourself to make more money in this field. Or if you haven't installed Linux yet, watch this video on which operating system is the best one for hackers. And if you're unsure if you should call yourself a hacker, that's the video for you. Thanks for watching and hack on.